Yeah, I didn't get to ask a question in the town hall today, but I, I was really curious um, to see how Obama, President Obama's team has, what steps they have taken to make sure his exposure to air pollution was as low as possible on this trip, uh, because the air quality outside is downright hazardous. Uh, it's more than 250 micrograms per meter cubed right now, uh, which is 40 times higher than what it is in D.C. right now. Um, and it's 10 times worse than uh, the 10 times higher air pollution than uh, what the guidelines suggest they should be. Um, so I was really curious to, to hear what steps President Obama's team has ta have taken to, uh, to reduce his exposure to air pollution here. Uh, and, but I was just, I'm very thrilled that he mentioned clean air and air pollution three times uh, in his hour and a half with us here. Uh, and we had a, I had a great time personally. It was great to see him again. Um, and uh, I'm just thrilled that uh, the conversation revolved around a lot of important issues, um, both that he talked about and also the ones that came up in questions. Um, but I'm just super thrilled that uh, we had this opportunity to be here. And um, I look forward to moving forward with uh, a lot of important air pollution work that needs to be done. Uh, mostly, I think we have to start with democratizing air quality data. Uh, because there's a ton of data around the world and more and more coming out of India. But the problem is air quality data doesn't make much sense to anyone today. AQI numbers are not intuitive. Uh, people feel uh, disempowered and not, uh, they, they, don't, they feel like they're not able to contribute to either the larger problem of getting to clean air or also even in the short term to tackling and reducing their own emissions to air pollution. Uh, so... A lot of, lot of work to be done, uh, but it was great. Uh, one key point President Obama made here was to mention that change doesn't happen overnight. You don't get 100%, he also mentioned, you don't get to 100% clean air overnight uh, or right away. So change has been and always will continue to be incremental. And um, so, and that he explicitly said that about clean air as well. Uh, so the, the, I think the, the biggest takeaway for me and for people who care about clean air is what are the increment, incremental steps that we need to take in, in our communities? Uh, because the answer could be very different. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, one, it, it, air pollution isn't one size fit, fits all. Because every city, especially by size, large or small, there are different pollutants, different sources of the, the problem, uh, and obviously different solutions to it. Uh, for example, odd even, which is alternating cars on the roads, um, has been tried a couple times in New Delhi. Uh, but it's not that significant because the, the, the improvement in air quality hasn't been that significant or not significant at all because air, cars and trucks are just one fraction, a small fraction of the overall pollutants for the city. But in smaller towns and smaller cities across India and the world, uh, odd even uh, is actually quite a, quite a pretty good idea that can impact uh, the air quality in, in, the uh, in the cities and neighborhoods um, uh, around, around the country. So, yeah really happy to be here. Um, I can see the Obama logo right behind me. Uh, a, a great buzz in the room, and a fantastic opportunity to meet other people, other young leaders around the world that are doing really well, including the guy who is waving. Uh, that's a nice little end there. Thanks. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you soon.